We're going to look at how this iLogic rule works in order to control the sheet metal rule that's active in all the parts in an assembly all at the same time. So uh, I'm just going to create a new rule in my iLogic browser here by right clicking and adding a rule. I can call that whatever I want, I'm just going to leave it as rule zero at the moment and I'm going to hit control V to just paste in the text from my blog. So as soon as I've done that and I click OK, I'm going to get a message coming up saying I need to create a multi-value parameter in this assembly called active rule for the code to work. So I'm going to hit OK to that, go into my parameters and create a text parameter called active rule. And it's got to be spelt like this with a capital A and capital R. And then I'm going to right click on it and make it a multi-value parameter. Now at this point you need to make sure that you actually have sheet metal rules um, in your library or in um, in the individual parts that have these um, names. Okay, so I've got sheet metal rule called one mil, two mil, three mil, so on and so forth that all the parts in this assembly uh, can see. So if you don't have that, you'll get another error, which we'll see in a minute. But if I add these values into my multi-value list and hit OK, then I can see that those are selectable in there so that's fine so now if I click done here so now if I change that active rule parameter then that rule should make all of the parts update so I'm just going to put that parameter on a form click on the form tab right click add form and then I'm going to find that active rule parameter drag it onto my form and hit OK so when I do that I should now be able to change that uh, that parameter using the form. So if I do this and change the active rule parameter to 5 then the rule should run automatically and you should see those change. So that's good. These two parts here have changed but these parts here haven't so you just need to be a bit careful about this. If I zoom in I'm going to change this one back to uh, 1 mil. So when I do that you'll see this part change but these parts here they're actually all the same parts are not updating um, so if we want to go into those and just have a little look as to why that could be the case. So I'm going to double click on one of those to edit it. And uh, the first thing to check is to go into sheet metal defaults and actually um, make sure you've ticked use thickness from rule and that you don't have an override in there. So when I do that and I click OK and apply. Now if I return and go back into my assembly, bring up my form and say in this case uh, I want the thickness to be 2 mil. then we should see the thickness of that double, although it may not be able to compute all of those features. But there we go, that's, uh, that's changed that successfully now. The other thing that might give you some trouble, and I've added a bit of error checking for this in the code, is if, you, um, if you've entered a value for, um, for your active rule parameter, um, or you've spelled it wrongly or something like that. So I'm going to right click on edit um, on this active rule parameter. I'm just going to add in here a, a name for a sheet metal rule that I know doesn't exist. So I know I don't have a sheet metal rule that is 0 0.001 uh, millimeters. So I'm going to add that in and hit OK and done on there. So now if I go to my form and I try and change the uh, active sheet metal rule to 0 0.001 it's going to give me a, uh, an error message which is useful. So this is in the code. It's going to tell me um, which of the parts it's failed to update. And it's going to tell me, please check that there's a sheet metal rule called 0 0.01 available in these parts and that it's spelled correctly. So uh, if I change it to one that is spelled correctly, like 2 millimeters here, for instance, or 3 millimeters, then that should work again successfully. Okay, I hope you find this very useful. Thanks a lot.